great pleasure to be standing here and to be talking to so many people that I already know from my research network at ECU. And I'm delighted to be following Ken, whom we've not met, but um, I feel I'm the yin to his yang. I, this is a women's journey, okay? Because apart from anything else, I was the wife supporting the husband. <laughs> So I've been here for 26 years, and it's a pleasure to still be here after 26 years. I consider myself born and bred an ECU researcher, having started here after six years in um, industry. So I came here with a master's degree in 1986, uh, having had um, years in television production, teaching a very applied um, sport discipline, which was, I don't know, television by then, and, um, and trying to do a part-time PhD. One of the reasons we left London to come here was to have children, because uh, you know we thought, oh well, we'll go to the, we'll go to Australia, we'll have two children, we'll get them out of nappies, because there's no childcare in London, but find toilets and children, and we'll be back in London by 1990. <laughs> <laughs> so here I am. Okay. So my big break was when they were saying, oh, you know, I was saying, well look, uh, yes, I'm really interested in doing television and um, and all these workshops and things, and they said, well, could you start doing some theory? I said theory, and they said, look, there's this unit on new communication technology, and um, we think you should be able to do it. And, and I said, oh, all right. So I started looking at it, and I started looking for a text, and there wasn't a text. You know, there wasn't a text that taught what I wanted to teach, because although 1990 was a really old-fashioned mad day, my PhD was on the introduction of satellite broadcasting to remote Western Australia, and people were talking about new ways of sort of resources do I need? And I started talking to people about that. And one of the places I started talking about that was at a place called the Australian Museum of Communication and Television. And I went up to a, a store which had all sorts of books. And luckily I'd read two or three and, and discarded them as potential texts. And I started talking to the woman behind the, the desk. And she said, well, what are you looking for? And I said, well, I want something that's going to look at social impact. I want something that looks at the industrial support by some ideas get taken up and not others. I want something that looks at um, the decision making in the political dimension. And she said, well, if you've got a moment, why don't you scribble down a few of those ideas? Because I can't think of anything on the table at the moment, but I'll look further. So I thought she was just going to give me a sort of, you know, she was going to say, oh, well, the answer is this place. But of course, what she did was she came back to me and said, why don't you write it? <laughs> um, so that was quite exciting, really. Um, well, I couldn't write. But what I could do was I knew that I had, you know, I'd never met Judy Wiseman, who was um, a feminist scholar in technology. Um, but I could contact her and say, would you be interested in doing this chapter for my book? And sure enough, it's amazing, you know, senior, senior people like Ken want to see their name in print if you write to them and say, look, I'd love a chapter on, um, on rodent uh, uh, sleep cycles. You know, he's the man to go to. So for me, the new material, trying to find out in a way that interested me, because that's all I had to work on in terms of what feminist experience um, created was the gold dust. It, 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 but within that, Amstead provided the, the diamond. Okay, uh, absolutely. Ken has said, what you look for is people you enjoy spending time with. Research is time intensive, and you might as well enjoy being part of a team. And the bigger the teams you build, and the more fun you can have together. And I would agree with him too, that should be part of a social team. I, I saw that not only it turned out, not only was Amstead, um, which I later became the, the first to involve in running conference and all that sort of stuff, not only was Amstead the place where I got my break in terms of introducing me to a publisher, but it turned out that one of the reasons why she was willing to commission me to do that book was because she thinks it's important that her authors have national and international networks. So she was looking for people that were active in associations because 
it's those sorts of networks that also determine whether people take books in their courses and so on, is how well known you as the author are and how well connected you are. So, you know, it looks expensive to be a member of an association, it looks expensive to go to their conference, it looks expensive to adopt an association as your wider research family. But it's really, really important. And the next thing I'd say about all of those expenses is whilst you're engaging with your area, invest in yourself, because at the end of the day, um, you're the person that is going to be the most critical determinant of what your career and what your future looks like. So that means that, you know, if it does take extra money, if you are putting in extra money to go to a conference or you're buying books or whatever, see that as an investment. You know, if you want to, set yourself a budget of, of personal investment and make sure that you use it wisely so that you're building those networks, building those I would say that if you're going to, well, I was told early on, give yourself five years to get your first grant. Um, I got my PhD in 1999. I got my first grant for my first ARC in 2002. I had been putting in grants, got applications from 1999 onwards, expecting them to be knocked back. But just allow yourself that time. Don't think, oh, but that was so much hard work, I can't do it again. The first grant is an absolute backbreaker. It's absolutely exhausting. The next grant is half the amount of work. It might be three or four or five before you get, but it's worth, but it is also worth saying, after five years, I will really look at this carefully, because not everyone is a researcher, and it's, you know, they, people can cause themselves a lot of unhappiness if they're, you know, dropping at their course. It might be <coughs> that after five or six or seven years, you decide, look, I know what, why don't I go for a teaching assistant course? Why don't I concentrate on something else? What else is there? got a to-do list and a papers to write list like Ken, but um, I'm having had that background in media, probably I'm more deadline driven than he is, so what else am I going to do? <laughs> because I don't have a list down there without dates by, number one. And number two, most of those dates are dates related to calls for paper, uh, calls for papers for conferences or for journals, um, or I'm trying to target a particular journal that's got a deadline. I really like to know when my paper is due, and I really like to be working with that with that deadline to go with. Um, and the other thing that I, well, looking at what makes a difference with the people that I meet elsewhere and the people that I meet here that are successful researchers, the one thing that makes a difference is the people who actually do what they say they're going to do. Now that sounds like so self-evident that it's hardly worth saying, but there's a lot of people who talk people to pay attention to are the ones who actually do what they say they're going to do, or indeed do something of what they say they're going to do. And if you concentrate on working with the people that do the things and follow through, you'll find that you also are listening with them and doing what you say and following through, and it becomes a wonderful, wonderful um, self-fulfilling prophecy, a, 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 a mutual nurturing um, and I would agree with, with Ken. I, I, I publish with half my students. The other half of my students are good enough to publish by themselves. And all they want me to do is give them feedback. So, um, and sometimes they give me a gift of saying, would you like to be on this paper? But they certainly, there's certainly no expectation of mine that the only publication they do is with me. But I do encourage my students to publish. Um, the most prolific student that I ever had who is now a full-time research researcher, published 16 things during her PhD candidature. She was a woman on fire. The second most prolific student I had was now sitting in the middle of the room. <laughs> and um, and she's, she's still publishing brilliantly and we're working together on all sorts of things. Um, so I said about journal deadlines and conference calls. Um, taking time out to write is just such a gift. And we're in a business which allows you paid time out to write if you can get to one of Ken Carey Moore's brilliant writing retreats or a writing retreat from um, that's organised within your faculty or um, you know the days when we when 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 I first started in 1986 in the UK not here in the UK academics had a notion of 17 weeks of 
Well, that's, I mean, you would imagine how much time that would have allowed you to write. Um, okay, uh, we don't live in those days anymore, but we can still argue for it. We can put big chunks of the um, aesthetic being assessed. We would like to have a writing which is of this group or this discipline or this potential grant grantee. You know, do those things. Writing is so important. Um, and the other thing is that you never with my pile of 180 essays to go through and a, a deadline for a paper. But the way that um, I would try and keep the research at the top was to try and do something that was research related every week and ideally meet someone that was important to my research life every week and just remind myself that I was actually an active researcher even though I had these 180 essays to mark by, by, by the week. Um, Even though it's
it's your time to come. You know, we can't expect, if we're going to be extraordinary, and in today's life, uh, today's academic world, uh, effective researchers are extraordinary, we have to expect that we're going to get more than ordinary support, and sometimes that, that extra support has to come from us. Publish. Ken said this too. I mean, I'm a creative writer in my spare time. In fact, have my 1991 unpublished novel been not published, I might never have finished my PhD. I've only just finished my Masters of Creative Writing, which is my second novel, but you know, I was a bit busy between 1991 and 2005 when I enrolled in that. Um, I'm hoping that my next novel, which, um, <coughs> which has had a fan, which is very exciting in a way, <laughs> um, will be, um, will, will, will be shorter than 20 chapters, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, but the exciting thing about, you know, skills in writing are never wasted because that business of, of do what you say you do, you have to show yourself as an effective researcher. I get at least six papers out of every grant. I've had eight grants, okay? So that sets up something. Um, and some of those papers have, some of those grants have far more. I mean, the one which had the, the student was now the curtain, you know, that had 20 outputs at the end of it. You know, there were, but, and these days, in order to get a grant, <coughs> CV uh, were related to the grants that you had. I'm very lucky because I was always driven to buy these numbers. I'm very lucky because I can just put them in. Unfortunately, as Ken can guess, they aren't necessarily all the best that I can do. But what surprises me is I, I can't tell what a high quality paper is going to be until in retrospect. Some of my best papers, unfortunately, were written for conferences because, you know, that's, I find you have to write to find out what you want to say. And sometimes what you want to say is news to you and you say, my goodness, it's true, you know, fancy that. How exciting. And that's what other people said as well, but unfortunately it's been wasted on the conference, but never mind. And that's 